Okay, we want to look at coordinate system and locations part B. We've actually um, released the first video on this section, this uh, coordinate system and projection course code CIX GIS 005 is uh, divided into about four parts. So this is section B of it. So if you've actually followed us, uh, if you have to check the section A, of this video for you to be able to follow up up to this moment the section b will actually go into some other classification modes that we didn't actually discuss in the first part and after this part we'll go into this to the third part and other the final part so please um, let's move to the next one now we'll look at the map projection and what it brings of distortion there's no how you project map from a circular surface to a planar surface for it to be the same. There will be some kind of distortions and the kind of, you know, um, um, irregularities along the surface. So the transformation from X surface onto a plane surface is what actually results into these distortions. So you have to be aware of this, but that's the essence of projection and local datum into, you know, into a local reference number based on what you are working you know based on this there are three kinds of developable surfaces that the scientists have actually developed to reduce the extent of distortion if you look at this place this is at this particular point at this tangent you can find out that at this particular point there won't be any projection uh, any distortion meanwhile at this particular point there is a lot of increasing distortion here so it depends on where you are the surface of the earth the distortion can increase or reduce and also when you use more of the local data distortions are actually reduced so the three types of developable surfaces are cylinder the cone and the plane and their corresponding projections are called cylindrical conical and planar so projections can be further categorized based on their contact on the tangent like what i've just showed here and with reference to the surface of the egg in the orientation so that is just about projection and distortion so we need to understand that when you project that's why when you project from a gcs to um, a ucm sometimes there will be a, a minor kind of the um, some issues with your coordinate with position with some differences to so that it's as a result of projecting from one coordinate um, form to another then these are some of the world projections we know you know so the cartographers try to try to reduce the extent of distortion because of uh, projection so you can look at this and see that these are the major world projections we have we we'll have the conform the conformal or the automorphic projection which actually retains the angles and the shape of a smaller area another one kind of projection is the equivalent or what we call the equal area projection this actually try to retain the correct relative sizes you know then another one is the equidistance projection actually conserves the distance between two points in a map another kind of projection is azimuthal or true direction this actually represents the part of the x direction correctly with a straight line so but no projection can show a direction so that the latitude and longitude are straight line no so this is the major world projections you should know so when we're going to add gix we're talking about projections and distortions different kind of coordinate systems we'll be able to understand the reasons why you have to project and the reason why you have to use different kind of coordinate system. So you need to understand which coordinate system is your map working or your data you are using, which coordinate system you are using. Now, because of the distortions in projection, the concept of that comes in. Now, we found out that it's better you, you know, you develop the, the, what you call develop a local data based on where you're working from. So depending on the reference, Whereas there are the different kind of references based on a particular location. So this actually helps to control amount of destruction you can get on your 2D planner suffix. So that to me is a set of parameters and ground control point defining a local coordinate system. That is it. If you look at this drawing here, you can see different data, the topographic suffix, 
which differs from location to because of you know because of um, different weathering and other happening from one location to the other you can look at the ellipsoidal surface is flattened face actually used to represent the geometric mode of the earth which is the joint you know so if you look at the joint itself here you can look at the suffix here so the joint is just approximately a kind of a mean sea level is the zero suffix as defined by the earth gravity so these are different surfaces at different locations so now it depends on where a particular reference number is coming from it could be from here it could be from here it could be from here. so you need to understand a datum in which you're working from so this will help you understand how to project to that datum and all that so there are some of these points you need to understand so if you look at this the same thing happened here you can see some irregularities on the x surface represented by this line and x center datum with the wgs84 and local datum of nad for example this so you can see the difference and irregularities on this. So geodetists actually use spheroids and ellipsoids to model the 3D dimensional shape of the X. Because of this, local variation still exists. Even though you do this, you see, there are local variations. So because of this local variation, resulting from different thicknesses of the earth crust or different gradational due to density of the crustal material, that brings the issue of datum so datum is created actually to account for local variation in establishing a coordinate system that's why we have the world geodetic system which is a wgs84 it provides a good overall mean solution so for all places on the earth that's why most of the work we do we say wgs so as we go into the actually we say most of the work we are going to be working with WGS84, WGS84, because it is like a generalized X centered coordinate system that is actually used worldwide. So from there, you can now project to other kind of coordinate system. You know, however, for specific local, local measurement also, WGS cannot just still account for local variations, but it is a starting point for you to project. You know, for example, the local North American datum of 1927, that is good NADS. Are more closely fit to the earth surface in the upper left quadrant of the earth cross section that does not mean that you will use the same nad in another location if this is actually used in other locations it, you find out that you have a very gross error so most of the maps that are actually used now in the u.s are created based on the nad 83 which has actually replaced nad you know 27. so this is why the two concepts came in place for you to understand you know to control local variation based on different surfaces that just we just shown here then we look at projection parameters whenever you're working at the end of the day you need to understand the projection parameters you know a datum specified dimension of specific spheroid a point of origin an azimuth from the origin to a second point and the spatial orientation of the spherical relative to the earth. Now, any map you produce is supposed to understand the projection, the projected coordinate system. You need to you need to show the system in which the map was done, where it was originating from, and all that. So a projected coordinate system is just a combination of a map projection, projection parameters, and underlying GCS that determine the set of XY coordinates assigned to a map so that's why i said that gcs is like a starting point to projection so most of the map will be originating from dix so when dix is actually coming from dix from gcs it's projected so then if it's already in pcs then it can be reprojected into another thing so the project parameter summarizes all the parameters all the attributes of your projections in a map like this is a typical kind of projection parameters that is actually cropped out from a map produced so in this having seen introduction of what it means to to use map coordinate system in mapping and projections we'll be trying to practically look at working with gcs 
projection on the fly, what it means to project into different it's, um, uh, into different zone from GCS to UTM zone. Then we we'll look at georeferencing and also look at rectification of or re raster projection and datum conflicts. So this is actually what we are going to do in these practical lessons. So we are in ArcMap environment now. We'll just this on a title ArcMap. This is a brand new ArcMap. We'll look at this. What do we do? We want to look at we want to first of all look at projection on the fly. You know. Now when we're talking about projection on the fly, what do we mean? We mean that we can actually project the app map understand this system understand you can actually um, integrate two different maps or two different layers that have different kind of coordinate system to be integrated integration of different coordinate system into one that's actually what we mean now for example if you look at this place if you say properties you go to properties you define you find that there are no coordinate system on this new app map there are no coordinate system Mind you, no coordinate system, okay? Nothing is defined here yet. Now, if we go to whatever you bring in here, the layers will assume the first system you brought in. Now, what do you do? First of all, you connect to where your data. So let's look at our data here. We'll connect to catalog. We'll connect to where we have our data the GIX, the GIX database, then we'll go to CGIS training. Okay, this is where we'll have a data. There are two data we want to bring in, raster image and another kind of data. Now, but first of all, we need to do something by going to customize so that we'll be able to see the meta data. That is, when we're talking about meta data, meta data is like a data information on underlying another data if you want to see the full information about this we want to bring in this map named Inimba image if you look at this Inimba image we'll go to the property but before we'll be able to see every information within this the kind of system that this is built in we need to go to app map option go to customize app map option click the app map option we'll go to metadata item description if you look at this is item description this will not give us the full information now if we say okay on item description we'll go here and we'll click this and we'll say item description this will just give us this information the coordinate system is not it's not actually involved here you can see that is all so you can see you are currently using an item description metadata style Change your metadata style in other option dialog box to see additional metadata content. So what do we do? We close this and go back to this place, app map option and go back to metadata. Then we'll go back to FGDC CSDGM metadata. We'll apply this and okay it. We'll go back to catalog again. We'll go back and see the item description. We'll click item description and we'll go to um, uh, description will go back here and we'll see a lot of information now we can now see ArcGIS metadata we'll click this it opens up you see we'll click this more it keeps opening a lot of information you can see a lot of information resource details citations then extent you can get the extent everything about them special reference this is where we are interested in you can see this is actually geographic coordinate reference is this but it, the projection is this have you seen it so we can get the information about it so this is gcs wgs 1984 and this is also projected into utm zone 32 